Hello YouTube, welcome back to the garage and our next little project which is on the bench which is a Vespa small frame engine. Now somebody I know has asked me to have a look at this because they bought it as a rebuilt unit ready to use and once it was put in the bike, scooter, uh, the clutch was completely solid, didn't want to give at all. It's a very reluctant starter. The only check for spark is very weak. Um, and there are some other issues that raise doubt as to what it is, why it's not working, etc. I've checked the, uh, the engine number and it comes up as a Primavera. So it should be a 125, which is what he was sold as. Uh, but the flywheel doesn't look Primavera, we should look at that shortly. And the rear hub looks very much PK to me. So I don't know what we got. He doesn't know what he's got. He wants to find out. So given the problems he's had, he wants it pulling apart and having a look just to make sure it is what it has claimed to be and why things are not going as they're meant to have gone. So we're going to pull it apart, we're going to see what we can find and then it's up to him to decide where he takes it. So let's get the spanners out and find out what's going on shall we? Right Cowling's loose. Spark plug lead doesn't seem to be very well attached to the. Uh, let's try that again. Yeah, okay. That might need looking at. That might be contributing to the weak spark. It wasn't attached very well to the coil, I don't think. Spark plug which is loose. So somebody has been at this recently. BR7HS to check if that's the right plug. This is loose as I said, but in good condition. Right, four cylinder head nuts. Should be 11 milli if I remember rightly. So we'll Crack them off in a diagonal. Oh, a diagonal. They're not that tight actually. The first one was a bit. That one's a bit better. Uneven tightness there. Not sure that was taut properly. To be honest. So we have nut, spring washer, flat washer, which I believe is correct. So that's okay. Can't get them out, so I'll tip them out when the head comes up. Right. Come on. No, I've got to get those washers out then. Right, so we've got a spring washer, flat washer, which still doesn't want to come. Yes, there we go, that's that tight one at the bottom. We're going. There we are, right. I think that wash is slightly undersized, which is uh, making it stick on the stud. Let's go now. Yes, it will. There we go. Ah! I don't know if you can see that. It says Polini. And it looks like somebody struggled to get the head off before because there's leverage marks on there. 
but otherwise it's in good clean condition really a bit of carbon but nothing very much so it's not standard then Right, so, next, I think we need to remove the exhaust. Two 13 milli nuts. That one, the back one. Oh, he's loose. Okay, right. He won't come off until you've loosened the other one and lifted the uh, and that one was alright so for some reason that one was loose so to get the nut off you've got to lift the exhaust pipe which gives you room to get the nut off and then two washers one of which is dropped down there Right, obviously a new exit pipe, so we're back to our barrel, Ooh. right, piston's got the arrow pointing upwards which is right towards the exhaust port, and the barrel very, very minor marking, but no, that looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So the head, barrel, and piston all look good. Rings are free. Obviously, that'll all we'll go through measuring all that up later. So, oh. Get the circlips out. Oh, and it's got proper eared circlips rather than a single uh, wire clip type. I prefer these. Right, I've taken the other circlip out. There's no point showing you both. See if the gudgeon pin will move. Ah, which it won't. That's tight. Right. Uh, well, in that case, we're going to have to use a different method. I'll just chop you off there for a second, and we shall do that. Right, this rather Heath Robinson looking contraption will act as a gudgeon pin extractor. So we have a nut on this end, which will fit inside the eye of the piston and contact the gudgeon pin. And then a socket, which is large enough to go over the gudgeon pin and attach, sorry, bump, bump up against the piston. So the gudgeon pin will slide through the middle of it. And then just a nut and washer. And then, in theory, like all good theories, if we do up this nut, it will apply press that pressure that way to the gudgeon pin without applying any pressure to the crank. Now there are proper tools for this, but I'm tight. Always have been. Why fork out money when you can get away with a simple piece of threaded rod? There we are. So let me just undo that and show you. I've just had a pin all the way out and I haven't. So a quick look at it. And that's remarkably clean. 
remarkably clean. Good, right? So there's not much wrong with that either. Then. It's very minor marking on the piston. Very slight scuffing, but it's very, very light in the top surface. So. There we go. One piston with loose rings and a good gudgeon pin. And then we have our little end. Which again looks very good. No bluing or marking, scuffing, nothing. So, it is looking like this engine has had some work. Definitely. Right. Let's pull our cod rod up and down. There's nothing in that at all. Not a thing. Right, very good. That gasket looks brand new as well, doesn't it? Cases have not been ported. They're uh, standard. Okay, well while we're here we'll whip the manifold off, shall we? Which is facing us now. Uh, ten. Yep. Wasn't particularly tight. That thread doesn't feel very good. A bit tight at the end. Okay, it washes off. Some sort of gasket go. Probably explains why it's a bit sticky. Right, okay, so we'll take the flywheel cover off and see what we've got on the flywheel. So then, we appear to be missing fittings. expecting to see you put it that way. Okay, that should be 17 I believe. And it isn't, so it must be 19, which is, because it's likely to be tight. Yes, it's tight. And then we're going to put that through there with a piece of rubber to protect the eye of the conrod. Should really not do on there for the second. Can't find anything, so I've got that lying about. Right, so that will protect the crankcase. Right. 
And there we go. Lovely. Lovely jubbly. Right. There is a wavy washer. And now we need an extractor. Loads of these extractors. Some British, some of that, some uh, European. So, is this the right one? It looks like the right one. And it screws in, so we will go with that being the right one. Bad. It can be real buggers then. That wasn't too bad at all. Magnets holding it on. There we go. Right, so as suspected, it is not Primavera. Ah. Have we got we have got a PK system electronic so how many wires three four five five wire system is that right no three six wire system that makes more sense. Which frankly looks a bit grubby. So we have two screws at the top. And I'm not sure what that is at the bottom. So let's take the screws out first. Where's our mark? Yeah, lined up on there. So that's okay. It's in the right place. Although, hang on, these. Hang on, what's going on there then? Right. Okay. For that to have timing marks for that, that has obviously been changed. Because obviously Primavera ones wouldn't have the timing mark on it that would match that, would they? No, they wouldn't. I don't know. I'm confusing myself here. Just keep taking it apart and see what we find, shall we? Rather than me speculating. I think that's an 8mm. Which it is. Should be another screw, really. Oh, hey ho. That's what you expect to find on old vehicles. Right. So let's get that out there. Now then, I will be putting that back in there preserve the magnetism and stop all the rubbish getting in there. It's a genuine Ducati electronic Piaggio stamp unit. So it's come off another definite PK. It's not aftermarket. Right, threads are good, tape is good. 
that crank oil, crank oil seal looks new as well. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's go and have a cup of tea, I think, while I think about what this is. Right, suitably refreshed. I have cleaned away the face here to check the numbers either side, which will give me an indication if things have been changed, and they have, uh, which is never good. Not an insurmountable problem. Motors will run with mismatched cases, but not good. I don't think it's likely to be the source of our issues, to be honest, but he wanted me to check. I've checked. And this flywheel side definitely doesn't belong to that. So when we take it apart, we'll check the bearing size and the crank size to find out what's going on. Um, yeah, it's not a lot I can do really. Right, so just before we leave the crank, we checked it for uh, bearing wear. I'll just spin it round. Just check the faces. Which all look good. No big, no big gouges or scoring on the faces of the crank. No sign of it connecting with anything. That all looks okay as well. So I suppose the next thing to do is have a look at the clutch problem because that's going to come off anyway. So we'll turn it around and have a look. So we, I'll take the drum off because it's all going to come apart anyway. So that needs. Split pin removing. Got a locking section now. What size is that? Oh, it's very battered. Right, it's actually 24. I don't know where I got 19 from, but anyway, let's see if we can get it undone. Which we can. washer, drums in good condition, splines are in good condition, there's our brake shoes, which also look to be in good condition. Right, okay, single spring cam, which is working, and then posts are held by two clips two eared clips you should just push off ha ha and then, there we go oh you little tinker I thought I had it then yep, definitely got it this time there we go two little horseshoe type clips Not an easy job if you don't have fingernails, I must say. Right. So now, we need to encourage the shoes off there. Which we will do by introducing a gap in the pivot. Like so. And then just leave it up. And out. Why is that stuck on there? Right, well, normally that works. There we go. I was going to say, normally that works. You're just slightly reluctant. Right, pivot's okay. A little bit squeaky, so some lubrication might not go amiss there. And then our back plate. Oh, we'll 
leaking oil because the person who took the engine out didn't drain it. Um, I'll deal with that separately. Right, so we've got three 13 millis holding the back plate on. A bit tight. With washers, split washers. Quite flattened split washers, in fact. They might probably do the renewal as they appear to be squashed flat with no spring left them at all. So that might be an idea on rebuilding this. And then our plate comes off with a seal, which is nice and soft, so that looks like it was replaced. And then our paper seal and our bearing, which also doesn't look bad, to be honest. Right, anyway, we shall worry about that shortly.